Okay. <laughs> yes. Go. 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 Yes. We are sitting here in Bartender's Factory. This is in Petersburg. This is September, and we are having two amazing guests. And I'm really lucky and proud and kind of amazed that we managed to to invite you guys. That we managed to make it happen because of those COVID restrictions. And now we are having a chat dedicated to uh, the top hundred most influential figures of the bar world, and not only about that, about your path, about your career, about everything. So we are having the most charming lady I ever <laughs> known, an amazing Priyanka Bla from India and Mr. Yang Duplama also from India. So my, my personal approach of introducing you guys is actually every time being curious about who you are, what you represent and what kind of what kind of assets are you, the professional one or maybe personal you have or what kind of accolades what do you proud of so for that reason could you please introduce yourself how do you perceive yourself right now in our industry priyanka Ooh, yeah that was first? yeah okay um my background would be i started off as a writer but i used to write about music oh um, cool. I used to write about music and review bands and uh, musicians and musical performances um, before I became a musician myself because music runs in the family. My mother was a professional singer. Um, so I did that for a couple of years. But while I was doing all of this, I always had an affinity towards bars and cocktails and whiskey, which I got from my father. Uh, he used to love whiskey and he introduced me to some, when I was a legal drinking age, of course, <laughs> um, to some great whiskeys. And I used to want to write about it in a blog just to remember my experiences because it was so rare for me to uh, find good whiskeys. Of, obviously, as a young student, you can't afford mm -hmm. uh, great whiskeys or you know go to great bars. So whatever precious experiences I had, I wanted to write about them on my blog. Um, and slowly that blog became more and more serious because I started going to more and more bars and interacting with more and more bartenders and got introduced to the world of cocktails. Um, and then I started taking my writing about cocktails and bars more seriously as well. So very quickly I abandoned the music scene <laughs> because <laughs> this was definitely more fun. More intoxicating. Um, more intoxicating. It really sort of pulled me in. And um, today I consider myself... Um, like I would say a, a writer, yes, but like a commentator of the global cocktail scene. So it's, 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 it is a commentator. It's not a journalist or a blogger or of foodie <laughs> cocktail enthusiast. No, I don't. I, I never call myself a journalist because, yes, I did study uh, some amount of journalism and I did start my career like that. But I think the word journalism for me is a very serious term. Mm -hmm. It's for serious journalists who do actual work on the ground. I consider myself more a writer, mm -hmm. um, not even a blogger, because that itself I find a <laughs> troublesome topic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. um, a commentator. <laughs> a commentator. Yeah. That's cool. So you definitely, you you search for an interest in events, for an interest in occasions, for an interest in people, and you yes. comment on what they are doing or what is going on around, right? Yes, I share my experiences in a way that makes it relatable. So I try and share both sides of the story. So it's equally interesting for consumers to want to you know, have these experiences, but it's also equally interesting for the industry to see what their peers are doing. Oh, that's amazing. That's so hard to yeah. get. I mean, sometimes, I mean, if you are in into like deep down into those uh, industrial trends mm -hmm. and then you completely out of out of interest from the consumers. And yeah. if you're talking only about like two ingredient drinks and mm. easy mixes and you don't have any any appealing, uh, yeah, appealing con content for for your peers. And that's yeah. so hard to achieve. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for having the chance to talk about everything. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I've, I've had a background in hotels, so I studied hotel management. So I went to a hotel school, and the idea was to become a hotelier. And that's how I joined a hotel around 20 year, 20, 25 years back. 25 Five years. years back. Yes, 1995 was my first assignment to work in a hotel. And incidentally, I was sent to the bar. And that's how my journey in bartending took off. Uh, there wasn't a designation of a bartender then in India. So I joined a hotel as a server. And I worked as a senior or a, or a, or a supervisor uh, within, within that span of four and a half years that I served in the hotel. But yes, the idea was to become a hotelier and not really a bartender. 
it was more of an accidental thing and later on became passion and interest. And therefore, after that, I left hotels. I spent a good amount of space as a freelance bartender, mm. doing a lot of weddings and a lot of private parties in India. And then always had the knack for training as well as setting up my own little bar, which was more defined as a true bar to itself. And that's when I set up Cocktails and Dreams Speakeasy, which is in a in a place called Gurgaon in the outskirts of Delhi. Mm-hmm. And it's in a slightly no man's land. And that's we that's when I start the first bartender's bar in India. And then of course Sidecar happened about three years ago. And apart from running these two bars, I'm very actively involved uh, with the industry through trainings, through, you know, certain workshops, also also trying and motivating the younger lot uh, to become more professional in terms of the approach as far as bartending in India is concerned because it is still uh, at a very nascent stage in India Mm -hmm. Uh, and therefore it requires a lot of mentoring it requires a lot of uh, you know motivation and it also requires a lot of upliftment uh, as far as the profession of bartending is concerned and that's what I do. Oh, amazing. That sounds solid. That's cool. So you, you still own two bars? Yes. Ah, so But you need to travel back and forth to, to operate, to inspire people, to, to take care and responsibilities? Or, or exactly. So we have a good team in both the bars. It's headed by a very prominent bartender in India who is fairly young but uh, very inspirational as well. So apart from these two bars, I kind of involve myself with a lot of training programs with hotel schools in India, Mm -hmm. also with bartending community in India, and uh, work, like I said earlier, in terms of development and upliftment of the trade of bartending and give it a more professional approach. Yeah, that is so true. Because I think that's very important. I think we are kind of on the same page uh, with uh, our country and with yours because, I mean, no mom and dad would be dreaming of uh, (laughs) sending... Uh, he's a, her child to become a bartender, whatever whatever it takes, or uh, anywhere to send. Where do you need to send your child to be a bartender? To Moscow, to a special <laughs> high-end education um, institution, or where? I mean, is it is it kind of respected right now, or it's only getting there, so it's more like a nice, real job, or it's not y- there yet? In certain places, for example, when we look at metropolitan cities like Delhi and Mumbai and Bangalore, and even Calcutta, the trade or the profession of bartending does have a certain amount of recognition, even from the consumer aspect. Mm-hmm. But in smaller areas, it needs to still be uh, you know, spoken about, that awareness needs to be built. Because uh, you know, I started a bartending training center around, around 16 years ago. And, uh, the 16 first, years ago? Yeah. <laughs> and interestingly, the first set of students that came, you know, especially for the first 10 years, were mostly people who were school dropouts mm-hmm. or people who would not be uh, you know, clear in terms of what they wanted to do in life and their parents were very worried and they would then call me up and then say, could you take him or enroll him to become a bartender? So what we were getting... when Parents pe- were asking you? Parents were asking me because they always thought that this was a secondary profession, right? Yeah. So if you're not good in studies or if you're not clear in terms of what you want to be in life, then you could probably become a bartender. So it was not taken or considered as a a category profession Mm -hmm. but now that recognition has come into being so now the quality of people who come into bartending are people who are aware and very clear in their mind as to what they want to be five years hence when they come into this industry Uh, and even even parents or consumers kind of know that this is a respectable job it requires a lot of effort it requires a lot of passion interest and of course knowledge and technical know-how so that has kind of happened in most of the A category cities now. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. But to answer your question, it wasn't always like this. No. And obviously, I think today the whole world struggles with the fact that bartenders are bartenders, but chefs are treated like yeah, gods. true. Yeah, true. Um, that's still very much the case in India. Like you'll never find someone going to a hotel, bar, and restaurant which has equally good drinks. And feel excited about meeting the bartender. They're still mm. excited to meet the chef. So that's something yeah. that still needs some work in changing. Uh, but culturally, I think I'm sure you struggle with that in Russia yeah. as well. Well, chef is God, bartender as well. He's he's a cool guy, but he's <laughs> not. Why know. do Why do you think that uh, that's happening that way? Because I mean, people eat like three times per day, but sometimes. Uh, 
a lot of people they don't drink at all so maybe there would be it's much more the respect uh, yeah. attached to uh, at least for india i feel like because of the taboo that is associated with alcohol in certain cultures in countries like ours um it's easier to respect someone who works with food than someone who mm-hmm. works with alcohol that is so true that is so um, true that's interesting. So mom and dad would be asking you just to to keep an eye on my <laughs> on my whatever. So just please that that's interesting because we 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 have a school and only the last year so some because the generation uh, I mean the new generation of bartenders is getting more more and more younger mm-hmm. obviously so I got people in my crew that are like 15 or 16 years younger than me. So I wasn't even not kind of dreaming. I wasn't even expecting that because every time I was in my teenage years, I was every time I was the youngest one, and now I'm older, fifteen years. <laughs> Grandpa. Yeah, I, that's insane. That's the insane. And the Russian <laughs> yeah. And the point is that sometimes mom, moms, it's more like ninety percent of the of all the time that's moms mm. who are just commenting via Instagram. Yeah, thank you so much. I keep following the posts of my son's uh, process of your. That's cute. Uh, yeah, that's, that's really so. Cute. That is so cute. It's so true because there are a couple of moms who follow me on Insta as yeah. well, and their, yes. their children are working in my bar. That's super cute. Yeah, yeah, that's they're, they're the ones who are commenting most of the time. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So they are they are putting all those flames. Yeah, cool, amazing. You cocktail man, you my son was part of that. Woo! And that's so touching. That's so cute. Yeah. So and it's getting there. So they are not ashamed of that. They are more like a proud because I mean it is uh in our country it is really it is really um, it is really a young profession. So yeah. to to be to be advanced and to get there uh, with all this recognition is much easier. Much easier. I mean, within three years, you can be, you can be a cocktail competition winner, or you can travel around the country. And that is so easy for moms to be proud of your son or your or, or your girl because it is yeah the the time of your of your I would say advancing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. so it's so it, it's so mm, comprehensible. Yeah. It is also very important that when you when you take up a certain profession, especially when we talk about chefs and bartenders, I think uh, you know for people like Priyanka, for example, who writes a lot about beverages today, uh, a lot of the writers in in you know twenty years ago were only writing about food mm-hmm. because also purely because they were more friendly and it was much more comfortable for them to write on food rather than write on beverages. Therefore, you were writing about food and then you were writing about chefs and people were reading more about it, right? Mm. Now, I think with with people like Priyanka coming into the field and writing passionately, traveling a lot, uh, it does give rise to the fact that it becomes a respected profession yeah. even in a country like India because consumers are reading more about it. They're, they're have a better understanding of who a bartender is and what it takes to be a good bartender and what you expect of a good bartender when you when you go for a drink at the bar right so i think uh, we've kind of come of age and it is growing not just in the in terms of bartenders doing a great job behind the bar it is also more people coming into the community and writing more and talking more about the community. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think that that's such a great point because when I write about bars, bartenders, cocktails, I'm always conscious of reading it as a consumer because I came into the industry as a consumer, right? Uh, I didn't come into the industry as that's trade. That's fair enough. So for me, when I write, I always step into that consumer's shoes and say how to not alienate my audience. They shouldn't read this and get intimidated yeah, because true, I think a lot true. of cocktail writing becomes so um, pedantic and theoretical and, you know, fancy that and most arrogant consumers sometimes. are arrogant. like, yeah, yeah, they don't understand mm. what they're reading. So they're like, this is not for me. Yeah. So the idea is to sort of bring them into your fold by making it approachable, explaining it the way you would explain it to a friend. Oh, yeah, I hope okay. some Moscovian and St. Petersburgian journalists, like <laughs> food bloggers, would, would, would listen to you yeah, because it's not that's not about showing off your skills. Yeah. It's about what is the purpose of me writing about yeah. bars and cocktails. Not to show you that I'm a great writer. It's to show you that this world is a world you can be a part of. Exactly. Yes, you know? I mean that's kind of a presenter or or a person who leads a masterclass or yeah. gives a lecture. It's right, like I would say there are two types of those kind of presenters or educators. One. Yeah. A type is eager to show off 
and yeah. to make the audience feel that his or her is amazing and great and wow. Yeah. And the second time type, it's more like 10 or maybe 5% mm -hmm. of all the speakers and educators, at least in Russia. So they want to feel your audience being better to yeah. feel better to feel ignited inspired and to 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 to, to know that it's worth a try when mm -hmm. coming out of the audience of the of the room and that's so interesting so it is said that journalists and media is the fourth power in a country so do you think that bartenders should be uh should be revealing a lot of accolades a lot of uh, a lot of i would say activity for you to write about them or maybe you just set the trend i mean not you personally but your your fellow mates i think the bartender should focus on what the bartender is good at and then it's for me to find the angle to write about mm -hmm. right if my bar if the bartender gets too busy trying to do things for the media then you're not doing what you're supposed yeah, yeah. to do. You're not a you bartender. Know? And for me as a writer, I feel like I don't want you as the bartender to do something different just to catch my attention. I hope that you're doing something so good that it already catches my attention yeah. without you yes. trying to do... I, I feel like becoming a show pony to the media is not a good idea. Then mm -hmm. you become a media bartender. You're not a bartender for the consumers anymore. Yeah, media tender. You know? Media tender. tender. <laughs> Please censor that bit. Yeah, media <laughs> tender. We got so many star tenders <laughs> around the world, so now we we need to rename them into media tender. So yeah. I'm ten the media and the media, uh, the media mm, ecosystem environment. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I think it works both ways. You know, it's also about the writer to be able to discover a bartender and deep dive into that particular profession to be able to discover a bartender who is working very passionately behind the bar and the focus is purely about guest satisfaction and guest delight mm -hmm. rather than media delight, mm -hmm. right? So it's on both sides. I think it's it's the purpose of the bartender is to focus on what he's good at and what he loves doing mm -hmm. and keep doing that. And the focus of the writer should also be to be able to personally discover. That's why I think a lot of times when we, when we see people who come to the bars and write or cover about bars, uh, there are people who just want a written document like a press release from the bar mm -hmm. and they just copy paste that. Oh, and yeah. there, there's another set <laughs> who personally wants to come and experience. So they have their own idea, their own translation about what they felt at the bar, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important for writers also to be able to experience and discover this whole thing at their own level through their own lens rather uh, than yeah, true. rather than coming from the yeah bottom. so there there is a saying so there is, there is not so marketing is not a department marketing is you so how would you uh, take it when a bartender or head mixologist and whatever head of and uh, would send you like not a kind of a press release but any 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 facts any videos and photos would be more would be more ignited to to have a meeting with him or her because he is more like in a in a in that status of your profession where he is ready to communicate because it's mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can have a, an amazing bartender but he would be or she would be late for the press release she would be late for the uh, for the video podcasting or that's so interesting that she she or he is an amazing craftsman but speaking about having uh, a connection, like a business connection uh, with you mm -hmm. as a media representative, media, and, and him or her as a craftsman, it could be completely unsatisfied. So what would you take it? He's cool, uh, she's cool and nice because she or he got that press release, or maybe it's that ah, man, she, she or he's like a phony person thinking all, only about the press release. No, like for me, there's no right or wrong. There's mm -hmm. certain stories that I work on where I find it very useful to have a press release because there'll be facts and things there that I might miss when I'm talking to someone. There's certain details get skipped because I'm the kind of person which is which makes me a terrible journalist. I don't take notes when I'm talking to someone. <laughs> so you only drink. I'm trying to remember. No, yeah. I'm trying to remember, remember everything by chatting with them. So I don't take notes because I, I, it distracts me. So in those cases, I find it useful when I have a press release to mm -hmm. say, ah, this was the name of the drink or this was what was in it. So that's useful. But I always feel it's useful to have a conversation with the person if it's... Um, if it's like a feature. If it's an interview, of course, you have to have a mm -hmm. conversation. If it's a menu review, I find the press release useful. Cool. So it depends. There's no such formula. Mm -hmm. But of course, copy-pasting a press release is the yeah. laziest form of yeah, writing true. ever. 
Because imagine now the press release will have typos and you've copied all the typos as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, always. I mean, yeah, oh, damn. I, yeah, ca- yeah, I, ca- I can speak volumes yeah. about that. <laughs> damn. Yeah, you it. could see that happen all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially with the fancy ingredients and the naming. So sometimes, uh, yeah, th- th- that kind of approach where a bartender want to show off mm. with the fancy ingredients, mm. with the techniques, yeah. with the names uh, of the person who created those kind of dreams but now we have an reef yeah. or or like a variation and uh, yeah and that's unbearable to read even for me because i know what he's talking or she's talking about but that's unbearable that's interesting speaking about media now we i guess we are getting back to that one 100 top most influential figures of the bar world i mean <laughs> you we need to have that that's uh, the name in is how you call it when you when you put only the first letters Acronym. Yeah, something like that. So we need to to create that for the top hundred most influential <laughs> figures of the bar world. E-W-H-M-I. So, yeah, t- yeah, there would be a hashtag <laughs> someday, <laughs> some someday in the post. E-W-H-M-I. So we appear to be on the list. So you appear to be me. So that's I think that's the third year of the that listing, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we we had a lot of questions to you from our Instagram account of Bartenders Factory, and thank you, Hamish Smith. Thank you so much for for blessing us actually to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice, and for having those uh, awards because some people hate those kind of awards. I personally respect that because actually that that's more like an instrument. Mm-hmm. And it's more like uh, mm, it's more like any other instrument. It's up to you how you can be using that. Yeah. You, know, you it's can. A, it's, I think it's very important that you know, in the course of your journey as a professional, recognition also plays a very important role. Yeah. When you get recognition, I think uh, it gives you that inspiration and the motivation, and also an added responsibility oh, mm-hmm. true. to be able to deliver and give back to the industry. Uh, it's a it's a way how we the hundred people look at it right when you look at it more as an accolade and then keep it to make your profile look beautiful that's mm-hmm. different but I think with every recognition there comes a bigger responsibility like Batman yeah oh damn <laughs> Batman <laughs> you see that great that's power yeah comes great responsibility yeah that is that is kind of an interesting issue because I mean responsibility where those kind of responsibilities start and where they end. For example, so uh, we are, we are mm, bar business um, comrades. I, I just wanted to <laughs> name that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are, we are fellow men inside that industry. So do we have the responsibility only in that industry or responsibility in everyday life, for example? I'm a bartender. So do I need to be cool and responsible in front of other bartenders or in front of the whole world? I would say in front of the whole, whole world. world. Exactly, because because when we speak responsibility, you are not acting. It is a system that you yeah. practice and incorporate as part of your character, right? You practice the good things, you practice the right things, and you set the right example. That's why you are there in that list, mm-hmm. because you're not just good as a bartender. You're also supposed to be good and humble as a human being. You're also supposed to show that responsibility to the rest of the world, Right. Only then, like we spoke about respect to bartenders, can yeah. only come when I get recognition. I'm also good otherwise in terms of my behavior, my character, uh, and how I approach the world as a person. You know, that also builds in about, because we are, we are people's men, right? Mm-hmm. I think bartenders are all about being people's men. Yeah, and true. And we are serving people who are not from the industry at all. Right? There are all kinds of people who come to the bar. And therefore, I think it is a responsibility, not just towards the profession. It is definitely a responsibility towards everybody else outside of the bartending world. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that makes sense because I mean, if you have that Friday or a Saturday night, you are communicating with like hundreds of uh, of your customers, and maybe with like two or three bartenders. Because if they are great bartenders, they are they having their job, operating their bars. Yes. They are not coming to your place. Otherwise, they have the day off, obviously. But sometimes that's interesting how it can be so challenging, especially for the Russian bartenders, to be to be just only just simple uh, nice person. Yeah, and talking about the idea of influence, right? I mean, I don't think the list says that because you're on this list, you are only influential 
in this category of things or you're mm-hmm. only allowed mm-hmm. to be influential in this particular topic i think being the concept of influence to me at least means sort of your opinion is valued mm-hmm. and you're not a unidimensional person right your opinion in general is respected because you have a balanced um, outlook towards life you're sort of non-biased in the way you treat people uh, you have a general respect for your trade and your community and that's what makes you an influential person it's not about how many followers you have on instagram yeah, or do you have true. a blue tick um, so i don't think that the responsibility that comes with a list like this can stop at our profession only it goes beyond it becomes your ethos it becomes who you are and how you present yourself to the world yeah so that brings us to that say so you don't work as a bartender mm-hmm. you are a bartender mm-hmm. so obviously anytime you are meeting any random walks in walks in uh, from your bar so and you're not at your shift right now because mm-hmm. you're just having your day off you still have those responsibilities to be nice mm-hmm. to host people to help them out because that's what you do it's not about you have your your bartendering career uh, like uh, five two we call it yeah. like five shifts and then two day offs and yeah, like you stop being influential you stop being a nice yeah, guy at 2 yeah, a.m yeah 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 <laughs> i mean that's insane but sometimes that's you can literally just observe it how oh no that's a person is a dickhead but he's a great mixologist mm-hmm. i mean well i think m- my palate i don't know how it works but my palate completely changes and perception of any flavor profile changes when i know that this drink coming from like a bad person <laughs> do you know i mean that's it's, 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 that's I a do miracle feel that way it's, as well. it's, it's true yeah. it's absolutely true because we are lending an experience not just in the form of cocktail we are also lending an experience like i like i said yesterday in the session it is more of a medium so the drink is only a medium mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It reflects so much on the personality of the bartender, the overall atmosphere, uh, the settings that you are in. All of that is important mm. to be able to experience that drink and therefore call it complete, right? The complete experience is not just about how beautifully or how balanced or how exotic the flavor of the drink is. It is ab- also about how warm the person who is serving the drink is. Yeah. It's also about how good-natured, the right body language. All of these things, I think, makes it's important to lend that sensory experience to the customer and therefore the cocktail or the drink is only the medium it isn't the the final thing it is only a medium right and therefore i think it's very important to go beyond just being a bartender and grooming and tuning yourself just from a bartender perspective but as a bartender like i said earlier you're a people's man and you have the responsibility of being an overall complete human being in every sense of it Yeah, so the integrity of your product comes from your integrity as a human being, right? If you're a disingenuous human being, it'll show in your work, right? So if, a, if I'm like a fake, it's going to show in my work, right? So the integrity of the product that you put in front of the customer, it all shows your integrity as a person. Yeah, that's a so cool. I, I I think I was crazy about those kind of uh, some Indian enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I thought I was crazy about those changing my palate because I don't like the the vibe and the person. Yeah, it's and it's possible. Sort of, it, yeah, I mean that's interesting. That's that's exactly what is chasing me from country to country, from the bar to the bar. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, how can you be how can you be comfortable in a place that that is run by a bad? I mean. It's mm-hmm. also kind of a um, a field of conversation who is bad and who is not, but mm-hmm. you have your... I think it has to be a, w- a place which is welcome, right? You go to a place and you feel very unwelcome and that place might be serving you the most uh, exotic drink. You will like probably like the drink, but it will not blow off your mind or you will not have a strong remembrance or a very strong impact or, or a great memory that you make in that bar. You see, I I had the, that kind of conversation back in the days um, uh, and having that comparison between restaurants and bars. So me personally, I'm a, I'm a uh, atmosphere kind of style of person. So mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of drinks because we can be drinking like vodka. I mm-hmm. mean, every bartender can, pour, can, can know how to pour vodka, right? I mean, yeah. or like whatever, or like amazing Indian gin, right? Mm-hmm. But still, so if, if we are not welcomed over there, there, w- there would be quite a challenge for me to stay there. But concerning food, 
would you go to a place uh, i know that some french places uh, they can be quite rude those representatives <laughs> they can be quite like you see that you do you know who we're talking to i mean i'm not mm. here for oh, for having a friendship with you this is your plate this is your drink and then you, and you have like 20 minutes and then chop 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 so you see do have you ever experienced uh, uh, i would say the interaction with a place where you adore food and you hate the ambience and you're still gonna get back. No, I've not gone back a second time. If I feel unwelcome somewhere, no matter how good the food and drinks are, it's very unlikely I'll go back again. Yeah. You purely go there for the hype and the experience for the first time because yeah. you've, you've heard about, you know, great things about the food and the chef. So you've been there, you've experienced it once. That's it. But there's nothing well uh, welcome about the place. So it does not make you feel go there again and again just because... Uh, it's it's great food because mm-hmm. what you actually also want along with great food is great service and f- the feeling of being welcome right it's very very important yeah cool thank you so much i i thought i, I was crazy be- about that i mean like everybody keeps saying about the kind of fancy russian restaurants that are that are on the list and you well I'm, i feel so uncomfortable yeah. over there and i now i i i was wondering whether i am professional or not because i'm i need to be there just to analyze to be on point to keep to keep myself uh, up, up to date it. yeah but damn I, i hate to go there and i still but everybody goes i mean are you are you not feeling that you're not welcome because they're too arrogant or oh, it doesn't matter i'm come there for food i mean how come i mean you 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 from the very first second when you're entering the place you are literally you are being told that you're not welcome because we are too cool for you how you can be waiting for the food from those guys i mean no that's only about food i mean damn am i too crazy thank you so oh, much the, the food must be really uh, good really. also also i think it depends from person to person because what are you going there for like i'm going there for a complete experience of course it's led by food mm. but at the end of the day it is also the people who serve that food which is equally important for me mm-hmm. but for somebody else you're just going there to let the world know that oh i've had a meal there or i go there for <laughs> <often."> your instagram <laughs> absolutely so i let think it's them also know that <laughs> i can afford it okay so uh, after after the publishing of the results of you being on the list something has ever changed like anything has changed for for your career for maybe your personal recognition because as we were talking about that earlier so that's that is really crucial to know that at least you you manage to achieve something and that's that's inspiring your i mean yourself personal that's that that could be quite inspiring for for your crew for maybe your customers as well have you noticed that something has changed definitely for me uh because you know having spent such a long time in the sp- in the area of bartending and beverages and coming from india where you know you otherwise do not really come into the global picture so so easily uh i think it was definitely an important recognition and it definitely has changed a lot for me from being just another bartender or another senior bartender in the country to be able to come on the global platform and to also bring in the fact that india does have talent and at the same time it is also inspirational for a lot of younger bartenders mm-hmm. in india to be able to think and uh, visualize big right so the idea is that a bartender in india can also think to be uh, somebody who can be on the global stage and international acclaim absolutely and that is absolutely possible even you could be from anywhere in the world uh, and that has kind of changed at the same time like i said earlier it has also brought in a lot of responsibility because uh, which also means that my approach to the whole idea of bartending and how i talk and how i speak and what i speak about the trade or just as a human being uh, brings in much more bigger responsibility because whatever i do now in the bar space or even otherwise is being you so you being watched right you yeah. you being so for example i'm here at st petersburg doing their shift uh, you you being noticed uh, by a lot of younger bartenders in india and therefore when i come here and represent the country and do my guest shift it is important for me to not just make a great cocktail but also through the cocktail medium bring in a lot about india and what india has to offer to the world i think it's also a responsibility for me to be able to preach and talk and propagate the whole idea about uh, what that country could also do to the space of bartending and cocktails cool so that is that that's fair enough that's fair enough so that changed yeah the responsibility and the power and uh, 
and the possibility of inspiration for the young generation, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Bianca, mm. Yeah, for me, I, I mean, I have no words to describe how it felt, honestly, <laughs> because <laughs> for me it was um, unexpected. Um, and like Young Group said, you know, being able to put India on the global map is a huge deal for us. For me, it comes from being the only Indian woman on the list, which was a big deal. And plus, you know, with Dramatic, I have, not many people know this, but I've, I'm like a one person team. Ah. I do everything by myself. And so for me to get that recognition felt like a very, very big achievement to me because I've been doing this for seven years. I could get emotional when I talk about <laughs> this. So give me a second, okay? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, That's cool. Yeah, so for me, it was a big deal to be recognized. I mean, it's not a major publishing house. It's not like a funded by anyone. It's not like it's got a major ad revenue or anything. It's just me, and I make no money from it. So it was, um, I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> that that I is, I, I didn't know that you were on your own. Yeah, well, sometimes that I, have looks guests, like I have guest writers sometimes, yeah. but I do everything myself. Yeah, because yeah. that makes sense, because sometimes you got that publishing house, or for example, like William Reed Media. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Yeah, yeah, of course, <laughs> they, they have so many talented people, they got so many investments, they have they the have whole... Designers, yeah, layout they, people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they have the, like a huge team uh, yeah. making those products and making those content, being cool and nice and being uh, appealing for the sponsors and for yeah. every uh, for, and for the everything, but that's on your own. That's amazing. Yeah, so for me, after all these years, it was a big deal for me to actually make it and have some kind of credibility attached on an international platform, but also the fact that so many people who I look up to in the last couple of years suddenly also notice that I exist. You know, so that for me was a was oh, that, yeah, cool. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. So yeah. yeah, sometimes to to get noticed not by anyone or everyone, but but by those people who you respect. Yeah, yeah, who you respect, who you were following for the several years in a row. I mean, that's yeah, yeah for me that's also was like wow, and that's that was the so d did you get those emails? So did you vote for anyone being on the list? Because I when we had that talk. <laughs> like uh, um, yeah, a month or like three weeks ago with Daniel and with Tim, so they received those emails. I haven't, I, I have never received anything. So, so I was. That makes you even greater because you don't vote for anyone, but everyone votes for you. <laughs> I mean, that's b because you know sometimes it's hey, you see, I can you quite a cool person, you are quite influential for me, so that's why I yeah I can I can notice you while voting, but I didn't know that actually those people i thought before so uh the, that representatives of the list they are not voting for each other so actually they are mm. so did you receive any email no i'm not part of the voting list as in i i don't vote for anyone I, you see did you vote cool i didn't vote for myself <laughs> no 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 you can't vote for yourself obviously but that's interesting how they how they would form those lists because are you cool enough to be um, to be uh, on the list, or maybe that's another layer of coolness to be on the list and being a voter. You see that you're double cool. I can't answer that yeah. question. <laughs> I'm, that's I'm a super cool person. <laughs> yeah, of course. For me, personally, I hate to judge anyone. So I hate or it. Or it's quite uncomfortable. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, because I mean, every time, because you, 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 you starting to to get back all this fl flashbacks of your traveling around the world and you you meet in a lot of d uh, different mm -hmm. unusual and trivial mm -hmm. and inspirational people so you definitely want to support all of them but you get yes. like several slots of course and you need to find for your personal not sake but for your personal mindset to to find out who was the best and the most influential for you. Well, I don't know because I for example I visited those continents for the first time mm -hmm. and there wasn't uh, a lot of influence uh, uh, on me by by that pe uh, by that person, but maybe he or she has a great deal of influence around oh, his or her country. Totally. So how can you how can you analyze that? But mm -hmm. that is so challenging. I hate to vote for anyone. <laughs> Damn, that's cool. Yeah, this that's is a pretty tricky position to be in. Yeah, sure. yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. How do you think those lists uh, will be expanding? How do uh, how you see this list like in three years and five years? What would be one hundred, two hundred, 
300. I think if the numbers become that big, then it kind of loses its meaning, right? Yeah. It it's doesn't feel very valuable to be on a list of like 1,000 most influential yeah, people. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. It's, think, it it is like... Like the world 50 best bars, you got the second 50 and now you got so like So that discovery. 100 is still okay, but I yeah. feel like if there's going to be like 500, 600. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, 600, of course. Uh, I, think, I think the numbers should just be 100. But I, what I see in the near future is more representation coming from lesser known areas. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it's, it's a global industry at the end of the day. And I think uh, you will see more participation coming from places which otherwise would not have a very strong cocktail culture in the past, but getting there. Um, and I see that happening. Because for a much more evolved consumer market like, let's say, Europe or America, you do not, of course, you do need you know, influential people, but you do not need a long, need a long list of influential mm-hmm. people. Because you've, you've kind of done a fair bit of work over there, but what you need to also do is uh, uplift the trade in smaller or less known areas and I think this is one of the mediums so there could be people over there who are doing a lot of great work but not being noticed as of now I do see that happening in due course of time mm-hmm. yeah and I think beyond cocktails as well right I think like this list for instance it's not just about cocktail bars it's yeah yeah that's beverages true. Yeah. in general so i feel like lesser represented communities like for instance arak in sri lanka um feni in india there are people who are doing great work that are impacting these small um, exactly. alcoholic beverages in their communities so hopefully in a couple of years we'll see them come into the fold as well just like you know in south america people are doing great work with agave yeah so we want to see that kind of uh, recognition for people in south asia parts of asia as well their local spirits and local communities mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so this year there wasn't uh, there wasn't the list of the voters uh or they were made um, from uh, the bartenders so they they were uh, the uh, the major part they were like educators mm-hmm. journalists they were a brand representative so representative so that means that uh, they they were picking out from different areas, not only for the uh, from the from the bar areas. Exactly. Yeah. I, think, I think the list had lesser less than fifty people from the bar industry. I yeah. Think more yeah. people who represents the bar industry in different forms. I think that's very yeah. important that Which that balance, cool. because yeah. we spoke about it earlier, right? It, for the for the trade to grow and to be recognized, we need to work as a community, not just as a community of bartenders, mm-hmm. but a community which also has a voice. Look, I see it like a like a play in a theater, right? Mm-hmm. I am not the star of the play. Yeah. You guys are all the actors. I may be the playwright, or I'm the costume designer, mm-hmm. or I'm the sound guy or the light guy. But everyone needs due recognition when that play does really well. Yes. Yeah, that so makes for sense. me, I see this whole industry like a play, and mm-hmm. you guys are all the actors. We're just like the supporting crew of this performance. Yep. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, I remember me watching, like, back in the days, like, 10 or 15 years ago, like, one of the Oscars, and I was mesmerized by the fact that uh, they had not only actors who were appreciated, but there was, like, uh, Oscar for the best m- music screenplay. director. Holly, yeah, screenplay. And it was like, wow, for me, being a teenager, I mean... Oh, what the fuck is that guy? I mean, I know Brad Pitt and he's cool. Give him an Oscar because I mean, he's he's on the screen, right? And everybody knows him. But like a screen, uh, like a screenwriter, or maybe like costume uh, director or designer. Sound designer. Yeah, sound, yeah, that's amazing because at the end of the day, like actor or a bartender, mm-hmm. it's more like a small detail in the whole process and maybe if there were no uh, like visionaries uh, of the bar business Mm -hmm. who are behind that curtains behind behind the scenes scenes, so there would be no bars like that restaurants like that i mean chefs are cool but sometimes we you you have the whole pr department you have you have the whole sometimes chefs are not really into those recipes sometimes we they have a guy who is taking care of the recipes and that chef is quite talkative and charming mm-hmm. and got tattoos and a nice bird and that's why she, uh, he's in the middle of the screen yeah. but behind that chef behind that look behind that figure got the whole producing crew yeah. and that's interesting how we can uh, how you commemorate how we can uh, make them feel 
uh, make them feel comfortable and 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 make them feel proud of themselves as well by that list that's that's amazing yeah, that's everyone is part of the success story right so yeah it's a, it's a it's a it's a team at the end of the day right no, no, so you no. got to have everybody's contribution to making so even in an, in a, in in case of a film for it for that matter right in the making of the hero there are a lot of other people involved that's yeah right. otherwise yeah. how do you create that hero or the star of that person yeah mm-hmm. true so i actually as receiving some of the messages even now from from our instagram stories and and from the post so we have a bunch of them for you for both of you so <laughs> we are from Xusha. what is your f- <laughs> actually why why that's <laughs> the most obligatory a <laughs> question ever what is your favorite cocktail <laughs> Um, yeah, that's the that's the trickiest question ever because depending on who's making it, I like a super dry martini. Oh, okay, <laughs> super dry martini. So mm, super cool dry martini. Super, super cool, cool. Super, super, super okay. dry. So do you take because uh, I I think that it is also relevant where you drink that because mm-hmm. in India there is a certain certain climate or you do you drink actually like dry martinis outside or uh, in the sun? No. Yeah. Never. No. No. I'd yeah. probably pass out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. is it is it is it really hard to drink something completely boozy outside? We I've never been to India. We I don't, don't know. really have that many outdoor bars in the cities. Uh, uh, they're mostly within air conditioned environments. Oh, also, okay. it depends upon because India does have four seasons. So it's uh, if it's towards the winters, then you would not mind sitting outside. Mm. For example, the place where I I live, which is Delhi, you have extreme winters, so it's pretty cold during winters. Autumn and spring is quite favorable for you to actually sit out in the shade and get a drink for yourself. But summers are terrible, so you can't really imagine drinking something like this or, or for that matter, any kind of an alcoholic beverage out in the open. So you'd like to, p- you prefer a slightly more cooler place to be in. So it entirely depends upon which, which time of the year. Where in India you live in as India. well, yeah. That's interesting because you have, uh, because in Russia we got, we kind of, we have a, like I guess that's the big. I mean, geographically, that's the biggest country in the yes. world. I think it is. you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so I mean, sure. that's like huge. A continent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is so huge because I I remember presenting. There was like five years or six years ago in in France, in Paris. There was like Bar Rouge, the the Paris bar show, mm-hmm. and I rem I remember explaining the audience how how huge it is so it ta- it takes you nine days by train to yeah. get from the most western part uh, to, uh, to get from the most western part to the eastern part so nine days by train it's still the same country with all with a lot of climb and time zones yeah and time zones that's and climate crazy. zones and that's insane so sometimes when a bartender wants to 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 travel for for the good i would say yeah to change the comfort zone it's quite trendy right now to change your comfort zone Mm -hmm. and to to get uh to get there to to be a part of the crew that is quite mm, mm, popular and a a crew can be a nice ecosystem for you to grow uh they would go to moscow or like less uh less mm, sometimes uh to st petersburg but Mm -hmm. you have uh, several biggest metropolis, right? So I mean, that's everybody goes to one city, or or you can go There's anywhere, like, like Delhi, Mumbai, yeah. Mangalore. So like yeah, so there, there are four to five prominent cities in India. So when you talk about metropolitan cities, there are at least about these four or five where most people go, and then you also have smaller cities, so, uh, which are tier two cities in India, where also a major chunk of the population goes. So there are quite a few cities in India, I think about 10, 12 of prominent cities where most citizens kind of go for a, for a bigger, brighter career. So just for example, if I want to go to expand my career, there would be only one city like Delhi or no, you can go to Mumbai, you can go to yeah, Bangalore. you can go to four or five different cities. Okay. Maybe four. <laughs> yeah. But do you have that like we were discussing that before like moscow is the place where all the prices are ex- extremely high mm-hmm. you get a lot of budgeting from the brand so it's like 95 percent of all the budgeting in russia mm-hmm. goes to moscow concerning like the bar business i think Do in india it's split between delhi mumbai delhi, delhi mumbai, mumbai yeah. right yeah yeah that's where most of the wealth is concentrated anyway exactly so. yes 
Okay, yeah. cool. So th- you get choice. That's that is that is cool. Two choices. You know, I, I I don't follow the money, so I don't yeah. live there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I follow the heart. And you follow the heart. <laughs> so do you? Uh, is it mm, like Bangalore? Is it ready? launch like the high-end amazing bar within like five stars hotel or maybe like the bar that is ready to be on the list and everything like yes that. and I, i'm afraid to drop the name but there's there's a bar that i'm hoping will make it on the list oh so, cool yeah so finger fingers crossed fingers, right toes yeah, yeah. crossed maybe not this year but eventually <laughs> oh, okay yeah So is it because I uh that's the first time I see you guys traveling uh, that's you are the only ones I know from India. Yeah. I I know Dimi right now, Dimi yeah. Lezinska but he's not originally from India, right? Yeah. So uh and so do you think that it will grow like the quantity of travel uh, the traveling bartenders? So is it like kind of a mindset uh because That happened so like five or maybe four years ago that Russians would go to Berlin for the BCB. It was like that. It was like 2014 or 2015 where we had like around 300 Russians. And wow. it was like it was like that. Like before that it was like 30 people, now 300. And wow. it was like something, it, it, it feels like it felt like some someone told russians to invade <laughs> bcb i mean that was insane that was insane do you do you think that that it will change so we we gonna we gonna know more about indian bartenders i hope so no i think i think i think it is definitely going to change in the course of the next couple of years maybe next three years because uh, what i've seen in the last two years two to three years is tremendous growth not just in terms of bartenders but let's say Look at craft spirits in India. Mm-hmm. Look at people who are working towards a better, you know, drink experience in India. You know, in terms of being producers or marketing it, and you s- do see a more passionate bunch of people uh, mm-hmm. coming into this trade. May not be directly as a bartender or a bar owner, but definitely playing an important role in that space, right? And therefore, I think that enthusiasm is very high at this point in time, and it's only going to grow. Cool. Uh, That's and, really nice and to hear. Also, you know. There was a time when bartenders were poorly paid. Now, the last one year especially, you've actually seen bar owners and establishments that are ready to pay good money to the profession of bartending and give that recognition to the bartender. And therefore, that also gives uh, the bartender that, that ability to travel because, because he earns better now. He gets better recognition. Ah, that makes sense. He has better connect yeah. with the rest of the world. <coughs> Having said that, I mean, that's exactly what I was going to say. Traveling from India to Europe is, for a bartender, quite expensive. Expensive, true. Uh, that may have changed now. After COVID, we don't know. But the normal bartender salary in India, what it used to be, it was impossible for them to travel. Mm-hmm. I think the best they could do was maybe Thailand or Singapore if they really saved up. Mm-hmm. Uh, money so i think that's what held them back but of course they're very keen to travel they really want to go and you know experience all these bars their heroes are you know people like you and remy and dan and eric lawrence indian bartenders love these guys and i'm sure that at one point they want to see their bars as well but yeah it's been a question of being able to fly themselves across the continent. amazing so that's that's uh, the main challenge was As I got it right, was the was the wages? Now it's getting yes, there, it's but getting it's not there. about the the language, right? Because no. you no, most Indian bartenders speak English. Cool, because that that was the, at steel. That's the biggest challenge for the Russian mm-hmm. bartenders, mm-hmm. because I mean, as we were talking about that earlier, so bartender steel are not the guys who who were dreaming of becoming a bartender and to making that uh, that profession be in a lifetime mm-hmm. path. It also happened. So maybe they were kicked out of the university, or maybe they were they were young and they were needed mo- and they were in need of money and blah blah blah. But now, obviously, it's getting there. It's more like more respected. And sometimes bartenders would start to learn English only because of the profession, because we don't have. Especially, I'm from a smallest town. I I had a nice uh, education, but we were not having uh, foreigners. Uh, like coming around mm-hmm. the city and we didn't have any chance to practice even so because you would meet a foreigner one time mm. per year 
and mm. of course you would you you wouldn't be able or being so confident in yourself to approach like a random person hey hello you speak english yeah hey hello london is the capital of great britain what it wasn't like that obviously because that was kind of awkward but now you you so a lot of people a lot of uh, a lot of people speak english right mm -hmm. so the main the main challenge is to get money for traveling yeah it's mm -hmm. it's mostly money yeah. a language should not be a problem for indian bartenders nice so now we we need to create that student exchange program, program. as we totally. call it <laughs> totally within uh, within india and uh, and russia yeah i feel like Absolutely. already politically we have great relations yeah. and so let's do it with the yeah, bartending so, community yeah yeah so guys uh, i i ask you to promote this video so if you want to have a guest shift or you want to have a presentation and you have a like a touristic visit mm -hmm. so please we can we can talk it out yeah. totally Amazing. Okay, so we are uh, we are two minutes. Damn, we get two minutes. <laughs> we 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 have one hour already done. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Okay, so <laughs> damn, the best I, host ever. <laughs> no way. I just started it off. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Come on, fast and furious. Okay. So, could you please, yeah, tell uh, something that you wanna tell to the Russian audience because we're gonna be adding sub Russian subtitles so to to the Indian audience. You've been to Russia, already. you've been to Moscow, mm -hmm. you've been to Saint Petersburg. Mm -hmm. You are so crazy that you're gonna be visiting. The, we call it Veliki Novgorod. That means Great Novgorod. So that one of the most. Um, that's I guess that's the oldest city of Russia, like officially officially proclaimed. So yeah, any advices to to the Russian or Indian bartenders? I think the advice will come from him. For me, it's an observation. I feel like the whole world talks about Indian hospitality. Like we talk about how Indian hospitality is so good and it's so warm, and it is. But I feel like the Russians have, have given us serious competition. Oh, really? We were cool. talking about it, and this is my third trip. Obviously, I'm thinking. It's really hard to match this kind of hospitality. So on that front, yes. you guys are doing an amazing job. And I think for the first time, Indians are feeling threatened by your hospitality. All right. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I think it also comes straight from the heart, right? So, yeah. And that's why it's, it's, you, can, you can feel that connect. Uh, as far as the advice is concerned, I, I feel that uh, the, you know, while, while I was doing the seminar yesterday with a younger lot of bartenders, I do see them as simple, humble people. The idea is, and, and, the, and the advice is, that whatever you do in life and whatever success, uh, success you achieve in life, the important thing is to be humble. The important thing is to remember that you, it's always nice to be a good human being and a disciplined human being. Mm -hmm. uh, discipline can always make you bigger than anything else, right? So uh, therefore, uh, a lot of you will definitely have great success in life, but that humbleness and the greatness that I spoke about yesterday about being a great bartender and not just a bartender purely comes from the fact that you are also an equally good human being. So uh, do not lose on the human nature and work sincerely. And of course, go for your dream. Dream big and you will definitely achieve success for sure. Wow. That was intense. So, boys and girls, thank you so much. That was amazing guest from India representing uniqueness of the country of your personal hospitality, actually, because that was that was that was and it's still great. So, we have so many uh, days to come and to uh, to share the love to our craft. Thank you so much. That was amazing, Priyanka thank you. and Young Dub. Thank you very much. Hey, so much. thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.